somehow the crazy kids did it. The Big 12 survived. I, I was somehow. watching a clip from 365 Sports, which I'm known to do. I've mentioned that on the show many times. And it was a couple of the hosts saying, the Big 12's dead. Why are we even talking about this? The Big 12, it's over. It's over. They're done. Uh, this being after after Oklahoma and Texas left. And that video now has like 100,000 views. Um, <laughs> Five because checks. here you go. The, the Big 12, as dark as the day seemed under former leadership, past leadership, the crazy kids did it. The Hateful Eight is now 16. Uh, and, and the conference that turned its nose up to you is dead. And it's just going to own half the country, yeah. you know, for the most part, obviously USC, UCLA, biggest West coast brands. They're in a different conference, but you have eliminated most of the West coast, if not brought them in. Unbelievable case study is going to be done by business schools or whatever around the country about the leadership of these two conferences. Bob and- Bowlesby, by the way, not enough people are shouting out Bob Bowlesby. <sighs> Shout out Bob Bowlesby. He started something. Yeah. He brought the first four in. He is the Dan Duquette to Brett Yormark's Theo Epstein. And like five of your listeners will get that. Yeah. The Bill Parcells to Yormark's Bill Belichick. I was on an elevator with Bob Bullsby the week that that happened. The week he brought in BYU, Cincinnati, UCF, and Houston. And we forget he is the master orchestrator of this. He, in his ineptitude that we (laughs) assumed... Brought this conference back together, and Bob Bowles be one. Yeah, and when they when those four teams were brought in, we as Big Twelve people were pretty excited, but um, it didn't spark much interest nationally. It was just kind of like, oh, okay, the Big Twelve is really they're going to try this. They're they're going to yeah. try to hang on here. I mean, they're going to be you know fifty feet of crap, and then the Big Twelve. But I think people started to realize going into the summer that, Hey, this, this is not a bad move. Obviously BYU is, is a slam dunk. Uh, the rest are, have good football programs or at least have had some good brands the last decade. And then you start to absorb another major conference. And yeah. I mean, this isn't even a hindsight 2020 foresight was 2020. As soon as your Mark comes in and the first thing he's talking about, like literally in those media days when he's not even the uh, president yet, he's the commissioner yet. He says, well, the first thing we got to do is TV deal. That's that's the money maker. That is the most important thing to a conference, and uh, that's that's how he won. He went and restructured his deal immediately. The Pac-12 sat on their hands, and yeah. now they're dead. They're dead quicker than I think they ever thought they would be. If they ever thought they would be, um, it, it is amazing. And look, it's not going to be the SEC or even the Big Ten, even though it's going to probably be more competitive than the Big Ten. Yeah. um, For sure, (laughs) in most sports anyway. Uh, But you you eliminated the Pac-12. Just eliminated them. And we heard this crap for months about why would anyone want to join the Big 12, and yet still we don't know anything about the Pac's TV deal. I'm like, look, it's all well and good that you guys love the conference and like being on the West Coast and everything, but... Without the money, what is going to incentivize these schools to stay, especially schools like Arizona and Arizona State, who Colorado, who were not winning the conference in football? Like they're just like, look, this this conference is going to be even more competitive, but it's going to reach us to a more national level, and we're going to get a lot more money doing it. So your mark, man, Midas touch, absolute. Chef's kiss. Just absolutely put them in a corner. Year one, Drake. Yeah. Year yeah, one. It was quick. It was really quick, Brett Yormark, the way that he worked and brought this whole thing together. The one, the kind of a glaring thing that I point out, though, is people are not talking enough positively about Utah. Gre- they have won the Pac-12 championship. They have won a un- yeah. Rose Bowl. Ben un- Rose Bowls. Bowls. They are good at football. And everyone kind of hates them. I they pulled they pulled the attention away from UCF and said, "Bring yeah. it, bring it." UCF to us. had like a week. Utah became the bad guy before day one, and I don't. I I love the idea of having that brand in the Big Twelve and having the rivalry of BYU and Utah, but man, jeez, there's some there's some stinkers. Yeah.
They suck, man. Oh, and I know there's some good ones out there, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but they had no interest in joining this conference. And now they're like, we're the best brand in the conference. We're going to beat up on everyone. And look, yeah, if they join this year, they'd have the best football team. Yes. But um, look, we know. TCU knows. Texas Tech kind of knows. Schools like that, those things don't last forever, man. No. They don't. If you're not Oklahoma and you're not, even Texas doesn't last forever. Um, they, got, they, I need Baylor to win this game week two, yeah. Drake. You know, we're, we're objective journalists, obviously, but uh, we, I need them to win that game. Do you need think that we, can we invite all BYU fans to Waco uh, and give there. them free tickets for this game? They will be there. They'll be there. They're everywhere, man. When we went, when we flew out to, Provo last year, there were as many uh, BYU people on our flight and in our terminal as there were Baylor people out of DFW, yeah. which that terminal now has a Chili's, by the way. Huge. Humongous news. Found that out at two in the morning last night flying. Out. Oh, um, but for us. yes, all that to say, man, I, I don't know what the hell. And I'm sure the Pac-12 people, if they do have fans, have been seeing this rise the last couple of years. I don't know what happened to utah look it's a great run back-to-back pac-12 championships back-to-back rose bowl appearances yeah. didn't win one um but they think that this is just going to revolve around them and look i got to baylor after back-to-back big 12 championships and after back-to-back bcs bowl losses same situation Drake. and we felt good about our football program wasn't a lot of that going on yeah was it a lot of Little brother Oklahoma, little brother UT going on the way Utah thinks they are for everyone in our conference. So yep. gr- I agree, though. The best one of those four, I think, right now of, of teams that you that you poach from the pack, the best four or the best of the four right now is Utah. Even though it's one sport, they're, they're a top 15 team. Yes. I... Uh... I'm saddened by some news today. Quaylen Jones, no longer a member of the Baylor football team, running back Quaylen Jones, who never really seemed to get a shake on Locked On Baylor, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.